Hello, I'm going to show how we use a system of astrology known as vibrational astrology to gain insight into people. We're going to use it to understand Steve Jobs. You probably know who Steve Jobs is. He was the head of Apple uh, and, we, and also Steve Wozniak, who you probably know uh, was the engineer behind the first Apple computers. As it's stated at wikipedia.org, Steve Wozniak single-handedly developed the 1976 Apple I which was the computer that launched Apple. So Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were two of the main people who pioneered the Apple computer and the Apple company. And I'm going to talk about a third person, Bob Dylan, who might seem unrelated. But when Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs were young, uh, I think they were in their later high school years or so on, and they, they started to be friends and develop these ideas on developing computers, uh, they happened to love Bob Dylan's work, and in fact, Steve Jobs, through his whole life, f loved Bob Dylan, felt he was a tremendous inspiration, he got to go to one of his concerts as an adult and, and meet Bob Dylan. It was a big deal to him. And we're going to see the planetary patterns that give Steve Jobs his talent, um, that uh, we're going to see the, pat the patterns in, in Bob Dylan, how they overlay with the charts of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, it's it's fascinating. And one nice thing, by the way, about these three people, Jobs, Wozniak, and Dylan, is we do have birth data from a birth certificate or birth records. We have accurate birth data for all of them. And it's going to take me a while to, to cover all this. I'm going to show you what it's like um, to experience vibrational astrology, how we get insights into the people. So this presentation is going to be in two parts. This is part one. And we're going to mo mostly focus on Steve Jobs in part two. I'll show you a little bit about Wozniak and Dylan and the relationship between all the charts. Okay. Now, in, again, in this video, I'm going to show you the personal experience of interpreting charts. I have other videos that show you the evidence uh, from controlled research studies that a lot of the ideas in vibrational astrology actually work. But in this video, I want to give you the feeling of what, it, what it's like to use vibrational astrology and what we come up with. So I'm just going to share with you what happened when I looked at Steve Jobs' chart. When I looked at his chart, I already knew a little bit about him. He had died in 2011. When he died, I read a little bit about him. I remember reading that he took a college course in calligraphy. That course made a big impact on him. And I started reading about him in the Wikipedia article. And then I found this article here um, on uh, his experience at, at the college called Reed College where this professor had a huge impact on him. His name was Robert Palladino and uh, what Steve Jobs learned about calligraphy from him and how he got inspired. Now, as I was reading this and remembering that, that this is what I knew about him, that Steve Jobs loved calligraphy, I got, it was actually before I read all these articles, I just started reading the article in Wikipedia and it mentioned the calligraphy and I remembered that and I started getting this image in analyzing Steve Jobs' seventh harmonic chart. I'm going to show you this. This is one of the things we do in vibrational astrology. We analyze these things called harmonic charts. Even if you don't know what a harmonic chart is, don't worry about it. Essentially what the harmonic chart does is it shows you planetary patterns based on a beat. So the seventh harmonic will show us patterns based on a beat of seven, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the seventh harmonic beat has a certain quality to it. It's very introverted. It's very disciplined. And there are certain planets in Steve Jobs' chart that form strong patterns in the seventh harmonic. And in analyzing the seventh harmonic pattern, I could see how Steve Jobs had this love of discovering the cause of beauty, the basis of beauty. Uh, he talks about it here in this article. Um, they quote Steve Jobs as saying, I learned about serif and sans serif typefaces, about varying the amount of space between different letter combinations, about what makes great ty typography great. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture, and I found it fascinating. Well, as I analyze this pattern in Steve Jobs' chart, I realize that his fascination with the 
basis of beauty to, to remove everything that's a distraction and to find out what makes great typography great that caught the essence of it. I'm going to show you the pattern. But as I analyze it, it made me think of Japanese art. Now, I don't know a lot about Japanese culture. I'm not an expert in art history, but I think most of us have an image of Japanese art, at least some uh, traditions of it, as focusing on what's essential, what's necessary, where every component in the artistic work has a symbolic meaning, where there's no waste. I imagine that's probably true in the Japanese tea ceremonies. We don't see a lot of wasted movement, people jumping around, um, just doing anything. There, there seems to be a meaning and purpose behind everything. So this kind of minimalism and discovery of what causes beauty, what is the foundation of beauty, as I looked at Steve Jobs' seventh harmonic chart, I thought it's such a compulsive drive, it must inspire him to more than just calligraphy and probably Japanese art. So I go to Google, I type in Steve Jobs and Japanese art, and I find articles like this at appleinsider.com. Steve Jobs' love affair with Japan. This is mind-boggling. I'm thinking he probably likes Japanese art. Well, not only does he like it, according to this author, he's got an entire love affair with Japan um, where it pay, plays a huge role in his life. Um, and then I find another article, this one at uh, Inc.com, where this writer says that Steve Jobs was a genius. And his what was Steve Jobs' genius? Steve Jobs' genius is that design matters. Design matters a lot. It mattered a lot to Steve Jobs. And this is the genius of Steve Jobs, that he could that he found the right design, the elegance, the beauty, that computers are not just about technology. And she says that Wozniak is an uber geek and it's a common mistake that geeks make. They think about technological capability and they think that's all that matters. Now, I don't know if she's right or not, but what I do think she's right about, uh, well, actually, when we look at Wozniak's chart, we do see that he's got a geeky chart without the emphasis on the artistic design. So let me take that back. We do see this in the in the astrology chart. She is right. Um, and we don't want to over exaggerate. It's not, you know, Wozniak's a brilliant guy and he's a, a complex guy like we all are. But but Jobs' real genius, and it can go overlooked, is the emphasis on design. He lived in a house with very little furniture. Um, when the, when he went to buy when he and his wife went to uh, replace their clothes draw, washer. Uh, they spent weeks researching washers from all over the world and discussing their designs before buying one from a German company, Miela, is that how you pronounce it? Maybe I'm saying that wrong. It uses less water, less soap, makes clothes feel softer and help them last longer than American washers, is what Jobs explained. He is obsessed with elegance, with every component doing just what it needs and nothing more. Um, this minimalism showed up strikingly clear in the seventh harmonic chart. So what I'm doing here is I'm not trying to convince you that what I did is correct. You might say, well, it was psychic intuition or it's a natural conclusion. If he likes calligraphy, big deal. He likes Japanese culture. But I, what I'm trying to do here is show you the experience as a person engaged in it. It's like if you play a sport, you play golf, people look at it from the outside, they may have some idea of what you're doing. I'm telling you as a practitioner, this is what happens. We feel like we're getting inside the energy system of the person. We really feel it. And everything we read about the person, we understand it deeply and directly. Um, it's all in his seventh harmonic chart. So let me show you these patterns. I'm going to show you two patterns in his chart. One in his natal chart, and and this one in the seventh harmonic chart that shows this um, interest in artistic design and the fundamentals of artistic design. But let me show you the one in his natal chart first. The one in his natal chart 
inclined him to be harsh, demanding, and distant. So this is a well-known, uh, we'll call it a fact about Steve Jobs, is that even though he's very idealistic and he tended to have a vegan diet and into meditation and all these things you might call new age or something, you might think that would make a person very sweet and you know, all peace and love and flowers and rainbows. Well, no, Jobs could be very harsh, demanding, and distant. And we're going to see this in his natal chart. And I'm going to show you how in vibrational astrology we see these intricate, beautiful planetary patterns. We put more emphasis on these planetary patterns than on the signs and houses. I'm not saying signs, the zodiac signs and, and house placements and rulerships don't mean anything, but there is secondary importance in vibrational astrology. So let's look at it. Here's the birth chart of Steve Jobs. Now don't get overwhelmed by all these lines in the middle. I'll explain this in a minute. In a minute. But here's his birth chart. He happens to have 22 degrees of Virgo rising. His moon is in the 7th house in Aries. Sun is in the 6th house in Pisces. And so on. So that's his birth chart. Now, let me show you this very powerful pattern. It starts with a midpoint structure. Here's Saturn over here in the third house, in the beginning of the third house. And it happens to be halfway in between Pluto over here in the twelfth house and Mercury over here in the fifth house. It happens to be halfway in between them, what we call the midpoint. So we say that Saturn is conjunct the midpoint of Mercury and Pluto. And that's shown over here in the lower right corner in what we call a tree diagram. That Saturn is conjunct the midpoint of Mercury and Pluto with a one degree 19 minute orb. So if you're not familiar with midpoints, hopefully that makes sense. And I've, I've shown these blue lines with an arrow from Pluto to Saturn and from Mercury to Saturn to give you the feeling that here's Saturn right in the middle of Mercury Pluto. So that's a midpoint structure, very important. Now, what happens in Steve Jobs' chart is you take one side of this midpoint structure, right? We have two sides. We have the Saturn-Pluto side, and we have the Mercury-Saturn side. We take one side of it, and then there's a midpoint in between those. And the midpoint can be conjunct or opposition, doesn't matter. In this case, it's opposition. So the moon is at the midpoint of Saturn and Pluto. And I'm showing the blue lines with arrows from Saturn and Pluto pointing to the moon. And we call this a pyramid. A pyramid is... A midpoint structure, one planet in between two others, and then you take one side of that midpoint structure and a fourth planet comes in at that midpoint. So we have the original three planets plus the fourth planet, and it's shown here in this midpoint tree diagram, moon opposite the Saturn and Pluto midpoint with a half a degree orb. I'm using the Sirius 2.0 software. These features are also in the Kepler software. Current version of Kepler is version 8. So if you have Kepler or Sirius, you can produce the midpoint tree diagrams. And I've taken the ones for these specific planets, saved it to file, copy and pasted it on this uh, slide so, so you can see all this right here. Okay, now, that's a pyramid. You got it? It's just a midpoint structure. And then another planet falling in between the two planets on one side of it. So it's a four-planet pattern. This creates a powerful sub-personality. It creates a talent, a motivation. It, you can use vibrational astrology to see what people should do with their lives. Because where there are a lot of planets tied together in these patterns creates an energetic system. So it's, it's a very simple to see what people should be doing with their lives. Now, Steve Jobs has a very powerful system and very unusual where a fifth planet, so far we've got four planets involved, but a fifth planet gets involved and makes another midpoint structure. And it's Pluto opposite the Sun-Mercury midpoint. So remember, here's Mercury, which is part of our pattern. And here's Pluto. We have Saturn at the Mercury-Pluto midpoint. We've also got Moon involved. We take two of the planets, two of the four planets, Mercury and Pluto, and we add one more planet, the Sun, and Pluto is opposition the Sun-Mercury midpoint. In fact, Mer you know, Mercury and Sun are not that far apart. Here they are 
fairly close together, and Pluto falling right in between them. And I've drawn this in light blue. I've changed the shade of blue to a lighter blue just because there are so many lines and the whole thing starts looking confusing. So I put this in a lighter color so you could see it. And there it is, only a 16-minute orb. Pluto right in between the Sun and Mercury. So what you have is this intricate interweaving of planets where out of those five planets, there are three midpoint structures. And we call that an augmented pyramid. Augmented meaning one additional. And Steve Jobs has a double augmented pyramid where we add one more planet, Venus, and we've already got Sun and Mercury are two of the planets in our pattern. We add one more planet, Venus, and Mercury is conjunct the Sun-Venus midpoint. And I'm showing that in these light blue lines to show that Mercury is in between Venus and Sun. Now I put um, some of the planets here um, have a purple. I'll show you why they have these purple boxes around them later. That's something else I'm going to explain in a minute. Um, but don't worry about that. But So the Mercury's at Sun, Venus, and that's shown over here a little under a one degree orb, 54 minute orb. So let me go back to the previous slide. And what this is saying is we know what a midpoint structure is. There are three planets, one midpoint structure, a planet in between two others. A pyramid, you take a fourth planet, you get another midpoint structure. An augmented pyramid, you add another planet, you get another midpoint structure. And a double augmented pyramid, you add yet another planet, so you have a total of six planets making four midpoint structures. By the way, there's another kind of pattern called a string where things are equally spaced. Um, but this is based off a pyramid. Pyramid means one planet is in between two others, and then a fourth planet is in between two planets on the side, and then you just start adding in other planets and getting additional midpoint structures. Um, so if this is all new to you, it might sound overwhelming, but it's really simple. All we're saying is that a lot of planets are lining up in the middle of each other. And a double augmented uh, pyramid pattern is very, very powerful. And what does it mean? Look at the planets. Moon opposite Saturn, Pluto, half a degree orb. Saturn, Pluto means extreme severity. Moon is your moods. He's very severe. He likes to be alone. He's not always wanting to bond with people. He needs to get away from it all. Moon at Saturn, Pluto. Pluto at Sun, Mercury, 16 minute orb. This is a classic pattern for people who have obsessive ideas, very strong opinions, very hard to talk to. You've got Moon at Saturn, Pluto, aloof. Pluto at Sun, Mercury, he knows what he wants. He's not going to share. Saturn at Mercury, Pluto is an analyst. And the analytical part is um, a little bit weaker, but it's part of it. And Mercury at Sun, Venus is a literary sensitivity, the ability to use words, which he's also very good at. So we have a person who's literary, um, strong opinions, aloof and analytical. You mix that all together, and it sounds a lot like Steve Jobs. And what I'm saying is that these patterns define the personality. They define the energy flow. They define the circuitry within the person. And this, define, this describes the basic lifestyle of Steve Jobs. Now, when we get to the seventh harmonic chart, um, we're going to see his obsession with fundamental beauty, his minimalism, um, this elegance, this demand uh, to understand calligraphy and, and what makes something beautiful. Um, now, let me say also that I'm not trying to convince you in this video that the analysis is, is correct. I'm trying to show you how it works. Although, in part two, when I show you the way that the charts of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak and Bob Dylan overlay, it's so mind-boggling that if you're a little skeptical now, your skepticism may start eroding when you get to part two and you see how unbelievably um, precise the way the planets overlay. Uh, but for now, I'm just showing you the experience of how we do things. Okay, next point. We have a phrase in vibrational astrology, orbs are everything. Well, obviously that's an exaggeration. There's more to life than the orbs of aspects. 
but we use that phrase to emphasize the importance of, of the orbs. When you look at his natal chart, how exact is this Venus sextile Saturn? Saturn is 21 Scorpio 10, Venus is 21 Capricorn 10, no orb. It's exact. To, if you, with the planets measured to a minute accuracy, it's exact. That Venus sextile Saturn is going to show up over and over again when we analyze the chart in with the harmonics. When we go to the harmonic charts, it'll repeat over and over again because it's so exact. So you don't have to understand why right now, but when an aspect is exact, as we magnify this chart with the harmonic charts and we zoom in to get these rhythms within the chart, because that aspect is exact, it tends to stay there. Notice the Venus opposition Jupiter. He has a Venus opposition Jupiter, but the orb is bigger. Uh, 20 degrees, 30 minutes, 21 Capricorn, 10, a 40 minute orb. Now, in vibrational astrology, the difference between a 40 minute orb and a no orb is, a, is the difference is like night and day. So orbs have tremendous meaning in vibrational astrology because they show how much current is trying to flow through that connection. And this exact aspect has as much current as is possible, full current between Venus-Saturn, a little weaker to Jupiter. Now, Venus-Jupiter-Saturn is a typical pattern for artistic design. We see it over and over and over again. Website developers, architects, Jupiter-Saturn is designed. Saturn limits the um, exuberance, the, the largeness of Jupiter, I shouldn't say exuberance, but just the largeness of Jupiter, Saturn puts it under control. It makes for efficiency, it makes for planning and design, and with Venus, it's beauty, so artistic design. Now, this doesn't show why uh, Steve Jobs has his particular kind of design, but we already start to see in the natal chart his inclination to uh, get involved with artistic design. What puts it, you might say, over the top, makes it really extreme, is the seventh harmonic chart. Um, now, uh, let me show you that. I've got some more information here, by the way, in this paragraph. If you want to pause this and read this whole paragraph, you can. Um, but this just repeats what I've already described about the four-planet pattern in his chart. Okay. The seventh harmonic chart. What happens in the seventh harmonic chart is Venus and Saturn are still sextile. It says up here, seventh harmonic chart. This is the chart of introverted focus and discipline. Venus is opposite Jupiter, but it now has a five degree orb. 23 degrees Taurus to 28 Scorpio. Um, it's gotten weak. In other videos, I describe what the maximum orbs are but uh, I won't go into those technical details here. Just note that it's not super strong. Now, there's the Venus, Jupiter, Saturn that's in the natal chart. Let me show you that again in the natal chart. Venus opposite Jupiter, also opposite Uranus, but Saturn is within orb trying to Jupiter, only weakly to Uranus. It's primarily a Venus, Jupiter, Uranus. Opposition, trying sextile. In the seventh harmonic chart, it's still there. Venus sextile Saturn, the trine has gotten very weak, the opposition has gotten weak, the sextile is still there. Now, does anything else get involved with this Venus Jupiter Saturn? Oh yeah, Moon is exactly conjunct Jupiter. Well, exact, it's under a degree orb. So the Moon gets involved a little bit, and even more importantly, look at Pluto. Pluto, we can tell by the thickness of the lines, the thicker the lines, the tighter the aspect is, but we can see it's a one degree orb, Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn, Pluto gets involved with this sextile. Pluto makes things compulsive, makes them extreme. This Venus Saturn, which means minimalism, what is the essential beauty in the seventh harmonic chart of introversion, of quiet, of depth, of maturity, becomes compulsive with Pluto. 
Um, and the moon gets involved to give it soul, to give it depth, to add another important planet involved in the pattern. So we've got this fundamental interest in artistic design in the natal chart, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, in the seventh harmonic becomes deep, penetrating, and extreme, and soulful. And um, Venus is also at the Saturn-Pluto midpoint in the harmonic chart. We look at patterns and midpoint structures in the harmonic chart. Um, and we see some other midpoint structures as well. The Pluto is at moon Saturn because it's a grand trine involved here. It's at Jupiter Saturn, not as strong, a little over a degree orb. So this is a symmetrical pattern. It's called a kite. You're familiar with kites, moon, Jupiter, and opposition with a grand trine. Very powerful pattern. And as I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking he's got an exact Venus Saturn in his chart in this deep, mature, quiet, and inclined to ancient wisdom, seventh harmonic, also tends to be abstract, Pluto getting involved, Moon getting involved. I start getting these images of the calligraphy, of the interest in Japanese art, etc. And that is Steve Jobs, and that is what drove a lot of Apple Computer. Um, amazing. So I'm giving you the feeling of how we go about the analysis. Um, Venus, Saturn, Pluto, the deepest artistic ens essence in the introverted discipline, seventh harmonic, and thus Japanese art. So I anticipated it, and the research confirmed it. Okay. Um, I'm not telling you this part to convince you of anything. I'm telling you this to give you the sense of what it's like to analyze charts using vibrational astrology. And as we read these websites, um, I'll read you this uh, section. Late Apple co-founder and CEO Steve Jobs was somewhat well known for being a Japanese Zen Buddhist, but few knew how deep his infatuation with Japan ran and how it helped shape who he was and the company he created. I read that and it just blew my mind because that's what I see in the chart. This is what shapes who he was and the company he created. And this author who knows nothing about astrology but is obviously very smart and very perceptive and does a lot of good research, found out that it's true. Um, um, Nobayuki, I don't know what part he plays in this, writes that it all began when, I guess I think that was his, one of his teachers, uh, Japanese teachers, says it all began when, ja when Jobs first discovered Zen Buddhism. I'm, I think that's who it is, but anyway, it doesn't matter. After a long period of soul searching, including a short stint to India, Jobs found a Japanese school of China's ancient religion at a temple close to his home in Los Altos, California. There he met Soto Zen monk Kabun Otagawa, who Jobs saw as a life guide and teacher, eventually inviting him to be the spiritual leader at Next in 1985. So we all have a path. We all have an attunement. The, the Zen approach and the, the Japanese approach has a truth. It's the truth that rang strong in the soul of Steve Jobs. He connected with it, and he created great things with it. Um, Zen continued to have a profound effect on Jobs, manifesting itself in his, listen to this, manifesting itself in his aesthetic sensibilities and sometimes ascetic lifestyle. No, Nabayuki points out that the religion's call for Spartanism, coupled with Germany's Bauhaus movement, found its way into the minimalist design of many Apple products. Um, Okay, although Joni Ive is and was the lead designer of the company's most iconic devices, Jobs always had the final say before any design hit the production floor. Um, outside of business, Jobs simply enjoyed most everything Japan had to offer, from the culture to the food. He was enamored, often taking trips to the country's old capital of Kyoto to soak in the surroundings and eat the food. Even though he lived on a vegan diet, Jobs often made exceptions for Japanese fare like sushi and soba noodles. The chef of Cafe Mac, Apple's Cafeteria, was sent to the Tsukuji Soba Academy to learn the art of soba making, etc. Um, so it's almost shocking. When you analyze the chart, you identify this, and you find out that it's true, and you see the pattern that is behind it. And this is the other article I've already shown you about the author who, again, very smart journalists, who are studying it and coming up with what I found uh, just by looking at the astrology chart. Uh, and this is the quote I already read you from, from this article. 
from Inc.com. There's the full website address. And Pluto can incline one to be fanatical, and that's Pluto's involved in this pattern. Um, so, so vibrational astrology is a language that describes a person's talents and pa passions. There are very well-defined rules in vibrational astrology. The meanings of the planets, the meanings of the aspects are very simple in vibrational astrology. I'm going to make other videos on what each aspect means, what each planet means. I still haven't made videos on that yet. Um, it's, it's a very interesting form of astrology um, that's in some ways a lot easier, even though the language is different and it may take you some time to get used to. The rules are clear. There's not a lot of leeway. We have very exact rules for what the orbs are, what um, the meaning is depending on the orbs, etc. The rules for interpretation are very clear and specific. Um, and the focus of vibrational astrology uh, is to interpret what the person's passions and motivations are. We are able to see a path that a person can follow to find success and fulfillment. Now, in part two, that's we're getting to the end of part one here, we're going to look at the chart of Steve Wozniak very briefly. We're going to see connections between the char charts of Steve Jobs, Woz Steve Wozniak, and Bob Dylan. Um, and this is pretty mind-boggling when you see these connections. Um, and here's a quote from RollingStone.com. Jobs and Steve Wozniak initially bonded over their mutual obsession with Bob Dylan. Interesting. And, and the connections with Bob Dylan are amazing. So these musicians that you love, or artists that you love, or authors that you love, we all have our favorites, people that move us, that we connect with. There are astrological bonds, and we're going to see what those bonds look at. And where we don't understand each other, where Steve Wozniak very close to jobs, very good friends, but they're still very different. We, we see that as well. Um, but we'll see their bonding over Bob Dylan. Okay, so I'm at the end of part one. Um, and uh, here's some information on, on our software, the uh, YouTube page. And um, I'll put a link down here to part two, or I'll put it up here somewhere. The link to part two uh, of this video if you want to click and continue on to part two. Okay, my friends, thank you very much. In part two, we will dig deeper and we'll see how relationships show up as well. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.